Welcome back to the lab. Control loops are hard. So hard, in fact, that we kind of missed the mark on our first attempt. But let's talk about that. Let's talk about our first attempt at making control loop that regulates AC amplitude, why it didn't work, and what we needed to change in order to fix it. When I've been traditionally tasked with making a control loop, I've very regularly been asked to regulate something constant. For example, speed, voltage, current. These are things where you typically give a static set point in, and then you want the system to regulate to that set point. You want a constant speed, you want a constant voltage, you want a constant current. It's a relatively straightforward task as far as control loops go. It's been done many times before. Feed in a single data point, process that data point, adjust the output, repeat forever for as long as you have data. And that's what we tried to accomplish for our UPS at first, except for there's only one problem. We aren't regulating to a fixed set point, we're regulating to a moving target, that sine wave potential, that voltage of our sine wave at any given point in time. We keep changing that voltage that we're trying to achieve, it's kind of the point with a sine wave, but the issue is that our inverter is always catching up. While the transistors are chopping up the high voltage DC bus, those don't introduce much delay. We're actually regulating the amplitude of the sinusoidal output after the LC output filter, which adds phase delay. And that delay depends on the actual value of our inductor and capacitor, which have a combined tolerance of around 30% when combined, varying that with temperature. And let's just say it's difficult to know exactly what the phase delay will be at any one point in time. We can't be absolutely certain of exactly how delayed the voltage we're measuring will be with respect to our FET switching. We have a general idea, but that's not easy to compensate for in a control loop. Furthermore, we have isolated amplifiers and Hall effect sensors that measure output voltage and current, each with their own phase delay. While I tried to compensate for all of this, I never quite got there, causing some wicked instability in the control loop. The control loop was tuned and stable and theory, but phase delay really wrecked that, and it was only stable when the inductor and capacitor were precisely known. The tolerance of these components, this margin for error and phase delay, or delay in the feedback that we're using to drive decisions in that control loop, was making my job really difficult. But here's what that looked like. See all that funky garbage? See that terrible sine wave? Here's what you're seeing. The control loop screaming, whoa, the output's way too small, crank it up! Followed immediately by, whoa, the output is way too large. Turn it down over and over and over again. Why? Because the output was truly 50 when we expected zero, 75 when we expected 130, negative 50 when we expected zero. Our control loop is constantly chasing the ideal measured value because the delay accounted for in our control loop doesn't match the true phase delay of the system. The output amplitude is right but the phase delay killed us, so the wave shape is wrong. While I could have dialed this in for a board in particular at this temperature, I'm not confident that after the control loop was tuned, it would be stable across temperature or be similar enough from part to part or board to board that all of the other boards would be stable too. And I don't want to need to tweak control loop constants on a board by board basis. So this is kind of a complicated problem. So what was the solution? Well, instead of operating our control loop on a point-to-point -point basis, trying to regulate each individual point of our sine wave to a particular value, we switched over to a wave shape regulation method. Rather than try to regulate each and every individual point, we're regulating the average voltage. Why average? Because average is easier to compute than RMS, and so we can process more data points. If we're truly generating a sine wave, either average or RMS can be used. And we'll assume our sinusoid is sinusoidal enough to make this assumption true. If our assumption breaks down, we'll need to use the computationally heavier RMS method. Basically, here's what the new control loop is doing. It is continuously adding the current, the, the latest measured output voltage into a buffer for n half cycles. In this case, n is three, so three half cycles because that's the shortest period where a 60 hertz sine wave comes out to a whole integer number of milliseconds, which is our control loop refresh period. 
So we measure and record the output voltage, and after 25 milliseconds, or three half cycles, the microcontroller computes the average output voltage, runs the control loop algorithm, and adjusts the output scaling factor as necessary. So if the voltage was too high for the last 25 milliseconds, we'll turn it down. So that's pretty detailed, hopefully you kept up with that. And on a higher level, what did we really do? And why doesn't phase shift break this new control loop as much as the old one? Well, before we were considering every individual point of that sine wave, like we said, start at zero, after one milliseconds, we should be at 50 volts, after two milliseconds, we should be at 75 volts, etc., etc., until the sine wave was made. What we're doing is just regular old voltage regulation, but we're adjusting that voltage reference instead of having a constant reference. Make sense? Well, here's what we change to. Instead of doing all that, we just grab data over the course of 25 milliseconds. We know that over those 25 milliseconds, we will always have exactly three half cycles, and those half cycles will be aligned you know, somewhere. They could be aligned here, or here, or here, or here, but there will always be three full and complete half cycles within that window. If we know that there will always be three full half cycles within the window, that's where we can pull some neat tricks. We can use math to make our life a little easier. We'll compute the average or RMS voltage of these three half cycles to closely approximate the amplitude. It's only as good as the data we've collected, but based on what I'm seeing so far, regulating to average voltage is a very close approximation to regulating RMS or true amplitude. This fundamental change in the way we're regulating output voltage makes phase less relevant, but it has some trade-offs. First, the control loop will be unable to compensate for voltage dips or spikes within any individual half cycle due to highly reactive loads leading to a bad power factor, and that's because we made the decision to increase or decrease output voltage no sooner than once every 25 milliseconds. So we'll have to wait at least two and a half main cycles before we adjust. Second, the control loop will no longer be affected by phase shift just as long as that phase shift is approximately constant over a period of 25 milliseconds. Third, the control loop cannot react as quickly since we need to wait for three whole half cycles. This increases our control loop update period from one milliseconds to 25 milliseconds. That is gonna slow us down a lot, so our constants need to get increased for the same response time. The control loop now has an inherent averaging filter, which could potentially reduce our susceptibility to noise, which is always good. There's a couple more things that this change will affect, but those four are the big hitters that immediately come to mind that I wanna make sure that I get across. But that's enough talk. I wanna show you what this shift in our control methodology really did for us. Let's compare this old performance of that control loop that we were trying to, yeah, uh, with the new one. And just, wow. A great demonstration of this new control loop, for lack of a better word, being a boss, is a time when we overloaded the inverter output, triggering the 20% clip mechanism that we built in before. This allows the control loop to clip the sine wave by up to 20%, which introduces some higher frequency harmonics, but all things considered, allows loads to continue to function. Super cool. We can create a fundamental 60 Hz waveform with a larger amplitude than the DC bus, but it just so happens that there's some high frequency distortion on it. So what does this mean? Well, this means that the control loop was able to recognize that the voltage output was too small. It then responded by turning up the output amplitude to 120%. In this state, the output voltage was still 110 volts RMS, but the inverter reported the brownout accurately. It showed 110 volts RMS on our display, just like it did on the multimeter. Yes, that is awesome. This means that our averaging mechanism, conversion to RMS, measurement, PWM generation, all the filtering and transitions across the isolation boundary, uh, it's all working great. I love seeing something like this in action. After all, our inverter is usually able to regulate to 120 volts RMS. So when the inverter reports 120 volts, the multimeter reports 120, everything looks great, but it might just align at this one point. Seeing the control loop behave as expected during an overload or abnormal operating condition is huge. 
this inspires a lot of confidence as, that the system is behaving as expected and our design decisions were well founded. So yeah, control loops are hard, and I believe that control loops regulating dynamic values like an AC amplitude are more difficult to create than control loops regulating static values. Thankfully, we found a great method of implementing our control loop that works and works well. It has some performance compromises for sure, primarily response time, but I'm not seeing this as a showstopper. Ultimately, dips and irregularities in a mains waveform are not unusual or even unexpected. These types of distortions happen all the time, and equipment is designed to handle it. The inverter control loop is the heart of our UPS, so it feels really great to have this part of our system working and working well. Hey, looks like that whole prototype phase we did a while back? Yeah, looks like that actually saved us some trouble. So if you like what you saw today, consider subscribing to be notified of our future videos where we'll continue our testing with the push-pull converter, tune our push-pull snubber to try to expand that maximum input voltage to above 11 volts. I think that this UPS control loop ended up performing really well. If you've got something to say, leave us a comment letting us know what's on your mind. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. So Thank you for watching E for Everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye!